James chapter 1 is where we're going to be. Viviana, you want, you want to go ahead and come up here and read the whole book for me? <laughs> <laughs> if, do you, uh, of course you did. All right, just to bring you in the loop here, there's a running joke. Uh, anytime we go to James, the book of James, there was this one time I had this, what I thought was a good idea. Okay, I was a youth pastor. Viviana was one of, of the youth group. And, I, and you, you know, you realize that these letters in the New Testament, they were r- written to be read out loud, right? And so somebody would come with the parchment, and they didn't have, you know, they couldn't email it to each other. And so they would, one person would read the whole letter. There was no chapters and verses. Like, that's stuff that we added to help us navigate it. And so I thought, hey, you know it would be a good idea if I read the whole book of James to the youth group? And it started great, all right? It started fine. But about chapter 3, I got kind of tired, and my voice started sounding like that dude from the old Clear Eyes commercial, you know, like, chapter 3. And, and they were like, shoot me now, never do this again. So every time we get there, uh, I think about that. So, Viviana, we're not going to be reading the whole thing today. Um, sorry, sorry to disappoint you, but uh, James chapter 1 is where we're going to be. Now, this is a, a book written by the, the brother of Jesus uh, to uh, these, these Hebrew Christians, these Christians that, because, you know, James was, was brought up in the nation of Israel with the Old Testament, going by the Old Testament laws and stuff. So he was a church boy, right? Obviously, I mean, his brother was Jesus, so he, he was definitely a church boy, but uh, he was writing to the this church uh, that was scattered, that was oppressed, that was it was people that had converted from being just Israelites to being Christians, and so that's what this uh, this whole book is for. And throughout the week, I'm going to encourage you. In fact, on the back of your sheets, just in case I forget to talk about it, uh, we have laid out a reading plan that you can read the book of James this week. Uh, the book of James is one of my favorite ones when someone says, I want to learn how to read the Bible. What's, what are some books that I can start reading? I tell them John. I tell them James. I tell them books like that that you can, once a day, you can read a chapter and you can get something out of it. And so, uh, again, this Sunday morning is meant to just be an appetizer. What we do and talk about today is meant to push you towards uh, taking Jesus with you the rest of the week. And so that's what we hope to do with that reading plan. And then I'll also be talking about that on the podcast that we've been doing. So I'll be going through bits and pieces of James throughout the week. So I hope that you don't hear this and then forget all about it the rest of the week. Okay? Stay engaged. Stay in the Word of God with us. All right. So let's read James chapter 1. I'm going to read uh, quite a few verses. Well, we're going to read about six of them. uh, But they have a lot in them. But there's a couple that I really want you to to get. But I want you to make sure that you have the context here. So James chapter 1, we're going to start with verse 19. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and the evil in your lives. Humbly accept the word that God has planted in your hearts. For it it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and you don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Some of my uh, most memorable verses that I remember, those are some of the first verses that I committed to memory when I was a teenager. The, one of the first ones that stuck with me. And miraculously, we, we, they have found, I don't know if you saw this, but they have unearthed some, some exclusive footage of, the, of James, brother of Jesus, dictating these verses to the world. Check it out. See, wow, and that, that's exactly what that says, right? <laughs> that's, you're like, Jesus' brother looks like that guy from Transformers. That's weird. Um, that's, I didn't know that. No, that's obviously a joke. Don't go saying Ben said they found video footage from Bible times, okay? But th- I got to be honest, I relate to old Shia LaBeouf right there because some Sundays I just want to get up here, I want to read a verse, and then I want to say, okay, do it. And then I, like we should be done here. 
I, let's, let's pray and then let's, let's go do it. I relate with whatever was going on inside his head there where he was, that is the inner me coming out right there because sometimes I, I think of all these creative ways to tell you to do stuff. I, 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 I search scriptures and try to put together this picture for you and y'all are like, yeah, yeah. And then I go, okay, do it. And you're like, oh, maybe not. Mm, maybe I don't want to do that. In fact, I'm, I'm convinced that there are two types of people in this room. Only two types of people. I'm lumping you all. I know I shouldn't do that, according to some people. I'm going to lump you all into one or two groups right now. Not just here, anybody that's listening to. You are either a hearer of the word or you are a doer of the word. One way or another. You're either a hearer, or actually I should say just a hearer of the word, or a doer of the word. And so my goal today is to search the scriptures and to help you figure out which one of those people you are. I have a sneaking suspicion that everyone thinks that they're a doer, but I'm not convinced. Because it's very easy to hear. You know, everybody. The reason why I know you're a hearer is because you're here. The other here. You're here. You're, you have heard the word of God. We, I, I make a special point to try to be as well-rounded in, in giving you all the parts of the gospel that I can. So if you come for a certain amount of time, you've heard the word. You, if you grew up in North Carolina, if you, have a, if you have the internet, you have heard. So you're either a hearer or you're a doer. And so let's compare and contrast here. And we're going to see who you really are. And by the way, I'm not going to make you I'm not going to make you switch sides and put the hearers over here and the doers over here. I'm not going to do all that. I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit of God convict you of which one you are and tell you what you need to do about it. All right, so let's look at a couple, and we're going to break down these verses a little bit more, but there's a couple things as I've moved through Scripture. and Let's, let's compare and contrast. The first thing, and these are blanks if you want to fill them in, hearers make excuses, but doers make moves. If you're a hearer, you're probably going to make some excuses. I got to be honest, I lifted that kind of from my favorite rap song ever, which is You Can't Stop Me by Andy Minio. And uh, he, said this, he said this thing, he said, I got two choices, make moves or make excuses. I was like, ooh, pause, that'll preach. Let me think about that for a minute. Um, but that's actually the word of God, too. In fact, Jesus knew that that's, that's the only two options that we have. You can either make excuses or you can make moves doing the things that God has called you to do. Jesus told this parable in Luke chapter 14. Um, and it's really in verse 16 that, that it comes out. He says, a man is pre uh, was preparing a great feast, and he sent out invitations. And when the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began to make what? Excuses. One said, I've just bought a field. I must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another says, I I've just bought five pair of oxen, and I, I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come to, to quote the eternal words of my daughter Addie, blah, blah, blah. That's all I hear when I read that. Because, by the way, the, the, the context of this was Jesus was saying, I have given the, the nation of Israel, I have invited them to this banquet, and they're making excuses. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go invite the rest of the world and to sit at the table with me as well. And so that's the, the main reason for that parable. But we can even draw from that that people make excuses. And those people are a lot like the people that, well, you and I, that we deal with today, that we are today. There is always going to be an excuse for following and obeying Jesus. There's always going to be a reason that you can justify in your mind why you're going to not do what Jesus quite clearly in his word tells you to do, right? There, quite clearly it, say, it says, hey, don't neglect the gathering together of your, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Go to, AKA, go to church. But, but I got to mow the grass. What if my grass gets long? That's the excuse that I have heard or what or you know Richard did a good job saying hey tithe you know you God says at least you bring at least that 10 percent if not more to the storehouse and let it be used for the kingdom but I got bills to pay this truck payment ain't gonna pay itself I mean I what am I gonna not have Netflix okay no I have an excuse right you go wait a minute there's there's the, the Bible is telling me to serve those who are, are around me to to feed the hungry to shelter the homeless to to provide for the poor, but I'm really busy this week. 
I mean, I've got a lot. Have you seen my calendar? I've got, I've got a lot going on this week. So I have a good excuse to not do what Jesus obviously told me, told me to do. So I don't know. I, I'm just at the point where I'm like, hey, stop, stop amening me if you're not going to go and do it. Stop saying, oh, I enjoyed your sermon about generosity and then go and be stingy. Stop, stop doing these things and going, uh-huh, amen, share the podcast, come to my church, and then you don't actually do anything with it. I, I think that that is almost more harmful than not hearing it in the first place at all. We have to not just hear the word, we have to do the word. And so we have all these excuses that we can come up with to justify, but Jesus is saying, hey, we do what we want to do. Jesus says, hey, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand right now, so don't make excuses. So hearers make excuses, but doers, you get out there, you make it happen. Uh, another thing about hearers and doers, hearers puff up while doers build up. Hearers puff up, doers build up. I get that phraseology from 1 Corinthians 8.1 uh, that says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Hearers they, they know all the right answers. You, they, can, they, will, they will do well on, on the written test, right? Uh, but they don't actually help when the rubber meets the road. You know what it says, but you don't do what it says. Hearers can quote you scripture and verse. They can tell you which chapter, which verse where it says, hey, the meek shall inherit the earth. But then they won't give up their power and their might in, for the good of somebody else. It's... It's the, the same ones that you can say, hey, what did Jesus say about making disciples? What did Jesus say about spreading the gospel? And they'll, they'll tell you, but then they won't do it. That's what a hearer does. A hearer gets puffed up with knowledge, knows up here what to do, but at, never makes it out of here into their real life. Right? That's, and by the way, James keeps talking about that. Right after those verses we read, he said in verse 26, if you claim to be religious... But you don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Now, I know that doesn't sound like that has anything to do with hearing and doing, but you got to follow James's train of thought. He, he said that, and then he said this, because this is an example of where we can say that we're religious, we, we say that we know these things, but then we run off at the mouth, whether that be on social media, whether that be around your friends, whether that be in public or in traffic. And we, we claim that we're religious. We have our Jesus bumper sticker and our Freedom Family Church shirt. And then we don't control our tongue and we say and do stupid and harmful things. And you're just fooling yourself. People are going to go, their religion is worthless. That's why you get puff, and puffed up. Just It means you're full of hot air. But yet doers, they, they actually build up. They actually do some good. These verses aren't on your sheets, but if you want to write down the uh, references, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 tells us, encourage one another and build one another up. Pretty simple there. Hey, we're supposed to build each other up. Uh, Hebrews 10.24 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another towards acts of love and good works. Hearers, build each other up. So when you find out these awesome things about God, when you read your Bible, whenever you read your Bible, let that motivate you to actually go do love. Go do good works. Let that be the end result of what you put in. That's because hearers puff up, but doers build up. There's another thing that hearers and, and doers do. Hearers roll over, but doers roll up. Some of you are like, what does it mean to roll up? What's it? That's a, that's a phrase me and my buddies used to, used to talk about when somebody was ready to, like, fight. Well, oh, he rolling up. He's, you know, you, there, you know, like, there's a difference in, like, at the beginning of a basketball game, I've seen Le LeBron James, when he starts the game, he's, like, doing his little powder thing he does where he throws the powder in there. And he's, <laughs> but then when he checks in in the fourth quarter, he's like, like he's ready to go. He's ready to, to get at it. He rolls, he rolls up. He rolls up his sleeves. That's kind of what I envision too when you hear roll up. You got to roll up your sleeves because you're about to get your hands dirty. And so when you're a, you're a doer, you, you roll up. Like Romans 12, 11 says, don't be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Get to it. What are we waiting for? We have all this head knowledge. It's time to roll up. 
It's time to do something. It's time to roll up on the relationships in your life. And be a present. You know, there's a di- there's sometimes somebody can walk in the room and you don't even notice they're there. And it's not because of the mouth. It's not because you can hear Viviana before you see her or anything like that. It's not because of that. Good example is Viviana. She, she will roll up and you can't deny the fact that she follows Jesus. Right? I mean, she, you know about it whether you want to or not sometimes, right? Uh, because her presence makes an impact. Right? Sometimes for good, sometimes not so much. We'll talk about that later, though. Right? We've had that conversation. But for us, for everybody else, we have to realize that when we roll up, that means that there is some work involved in that. And that's the example that Jesus set. You realize Jesus rolled up because beforehand, before all of this, he was in the what they call the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And he's up there creating the world, ruling the world. And then we have a sin problem. We have a mess that he didn't make, we made. And what did Jesus do? He rolled up his sleeves, and he came down. He, he abdicated his throne, and he came down, and he made himself a servant. And he died for our sins to serve us. He rolled up his sleeves, and he pulled us out of the junk. Right? Because he And that's the example that he sets That's why Philippians 2.12 tells us to work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Now, don't get this twisted. He didn't say work hard for salvation. Jesus did that, right? Jesus did that hard work. But don't be slothful after that. The work is done for you. Now work hard to show the evidence that you're saved, right? If you're saved, prove it. Start letting people know, start, start being a, a witness and a testimony for the work that Jesus has done. And so if you just hear and you don't do, you never solidify. You never get your legs, right? Hearing the word uh, and then, but not doing it means you're not properly rooted. And if, not, and if we don't do that, then James 1.6 describes us. We get blown and tossed by the wind. Ephesians 4.14 goes on to say, we get tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. You ever wondered why somebody could come up reading the Bible and then they go, well, I don't know though, this Quran sounds all right. Or the, that John Smith dude, those Mormons, they got a point there. Or, or you know, maybe I just need to, to meditate and go, go full Buddhist. Like, I mean, that, on paper, Christianity looks very similar to the other world religions. In fact, I had somebody one time show me all these similarities between other things and Christianity, like it was supposed to <gasps> prove me wrong. And uh oh, now I don't know about that Jesus guy anymore because that kind of sounds like Christianity. And the problem is, too many of us, when we don't actually do the Word of God and we only hear it, we end up rolling over. When, when people start to push against us, when life starts to push against us, instead of rolling up, we roll over. Why? Because the doing anchors us. Right? If we hit the life, I, don't, I hate that analogy of then the storms of life, like it's been overdone. But it's got a good point. The Bible makes this point that, hey, life sometimes blows you here and, and there. And, and when you do the word of God and you don't just do it in, in theory, but you do it in practice, then that anchors you. Then you go, yeah, I, I know what he says, but I also know what he does because he's done it through me. And your faith has flesh then. Your, your relationship with God has, has its shoes laced up. It, it, can, it can go places. It can do things because you've done something with it. That's why Galatians 6, 9 says, don't get tired of doing what's good. It doesn't warn us, don't get tired of reading your Bible, although that is good. It says, don't get tired of doing what is good. Because at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Because, yeah, it's, it's, you got to work hard. Some of y'all are going, again, stop telling me to work hard, Ben. I don't want to work hard. At the right moment, though, Jesus will bless you in ways that you didn't even realize you could be blessed with. I hope they don't get tired of doing what's good to them youngins over there, right? Because at the right time, you won't roll over. But some of you because you've only heard, because you've taken notes, but you've never actually put that into practice in your life, then when any temptation comes your way, you're overcome. When any struggle, any hurdle comes in your path, you fall flat on your face. 
because you don't actually do the things that you know. So there's really no, no uh, sustainability to your faith. So hearers roll over, but doers roll up. But there's another thing that they do, and this is the last one. I think it's, I won't say it's the most important, but it's definitely the one that messed with me the most. Hearers pick sides, but doers pick up their cross. Hearers pick sides, doers pick up the cross. I feel like Titus 3.9 is talking about hearers. You ever heard this verse that says, Don't get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or quarrels or fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. This is like my pet peeve. Me and Jake have been talking about this a lot lately, how, how there's these certain, these certain pastors and they're, they have their glasses up here and they look because they want to look down upon you. And they have many leather-bound books and their offices smell of rich mahogany and they, they're, they're very proper and they always wear a tie because that makes you spiritual. And, and they know... I can't even function with those glasses right there. They, don't, they know the Word and they spend so much time sitting there talking about the little things about the Word of God that they miss out on doing it. Now, I'm not, you know dumping on getting to know God better. I, I think we should do that. And I think you can read this, your Bible every day for the rest of your life and still get more. And I think you should. But there's a point where if you keep, keep, keep reading and hearing and hearing and you don't do, then your Christian life is out of whack. And you're not doing good for anybody else. So that's why I tell uh, when we do our membership classes, I tell y'all, we don't get in arguments over secondary stuff. Right? There's so many ways that, that Christians choose sides. Well, baptism means this and not this. Or, well, did, did, like the one that, that we've talked about sometimes is, well, did you, uh, did you, are you predestined to love God and you can't do anything about it? Or are you, uh, do you have free will? Arturo and I were talking about that the other day. He was deba debating and talking with somebody. Guess what? The Bible says both. So guess what? We'll figure it out when we get there. Stop arguing about it. Right? <laughs> Is the earth 6,000 years old or 6 billion? I don't know. Ask Jesus when you get to glory. That is not important. Well, is, are we going to get raptured before uh, the tribulation or during the tribulation? Well, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> it hadn't happened yet. So stop arguing about it. Let's spend our time and our energy and our resources on doing the things we know that Jesus tells us to do. Make disciples. Love the lost. Share the gospel. Feed the poor worship him don't worry about the little stuff don't pick sides pick up your cross because by the way revelations three sixteen tells us what god thinks of people like that he says i'm about to spit them out of my mouth because when you get too wrapped up in details and you're like uh, actually uh, it was jesus the guess what you become lukewarm you become like you ever tried to drink milk when you thought it was cold and it's lukewarm Ugh. I spit it out of my mouth, too. Now, I don't know what that actually looks like. Somebody asked me that all the time. What does it mean for God to spit you out of his mouth? I don't really know, but I don't, I don't want to be a part of it. I know it ain't good. So we need to avoid it. We need to make sure that we are picking up our cross. That's what Luke 9.23 says. If you don't have that on your sheet, jot that down. Luke 9.23. Jesus says to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower... You must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. I don't know if you have, you ever, you ever tried to carry something heavy and then someone's trying to talk your ear off as you're walking in? This happens to me all the time. I'll be setting up and breaking down a gig. I'll be doing a wedding, and some wedding guest that just that has been bugging me all night or something is like, hey, have you, heard, have you seen the new thing? Or they, they, they've touched a DJ mixer once, and they think they're professionals, and they're trying to compare notes with me or something. And I've got like... Uh, a, a big old speaker, and I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you move before I crush myself, right? I don't know about you, but if I'm carrying a cross, I don't have time to talk about stupid stuff. If I have picking up the burden, by the way, that means, that doesn't mean you carry a cross. That means God gives you specific burdens that, by the way, he helps you to bear, 
But he says, hey, you're going to have to pick up suffering. You're going to have to pick up responsibilities. You're going to have to pick up a job description that other people that aren't Christians don't have. And if you're actually concentrating on carrying your cross, you don't have time to argue about stupid stuff like the color of the, the wall. Do you like this backdrop? I don't care. Don't answer that. We're not going to argue about it. It's up there. Get over it. That's the beautiful thing about our church. We don't have to have a committee to tell me how many, what color the lights need to be. Shut up. Do this work of Jesus. Like, that's, that's it. And so there's so many times that we get, we get wrapped up in these little things. Well, I, don't, I think that the, the thing should be over there. So I've noticed no one's given me their opinions on which room they think the, the, uh, the food pantry should be in. Why? doesn't matter. We just need to be feeding people. Right? So don't pick sides. Pick up your cross. Get to work doing the things that God has called you to do. So consider it. Which one are you? Are you a hearer or are you a doer? Have you sat through your share of sermons and you can tell me, you can quote my sermons back to me? Guess what? I'd rather you forget that I said them and actually do them, though. That's what I'd much rather happen. So which one are you? Are you a hearer? Or are you a doer? And by the way, let me just wrap up with this. I know hearing is important, right? Romans 10, 14 says, How are they going to believe in him to whom they've never heard? And how are they here without someone preaching? That's why I'm doing this, right? Because you, you do need to hear. But you realize that's just the first step. There's a lot of people that know a lot about God that are going to experience a lot of hell one day. Because they've only heard and they haven't done. So if you don't hear anything else from my lips this morning, hear this. We are all in need of a Savior. That, that we have all naturally, we don't gravitate towards being a good person. That we all have a disease eating away at us called sin. And that we need Jesus, the only person that can fix that relationship between us and God. We need to die to ourselves. We need to receive that forgiveness and new life through, the, through what Jesus did for us on his cross. Right? That's, that's what you need to hear. But guess what? Hearing it's not going to save you. Right? You have to actually call on the name of the Lord. You have to actually really repent. You have to really ask him to forgive you and to save you and do it. Don't just hear it. So let me, let me pray for you, and then we're going to give you a chance to respond. I have one more verse I want to share with you, but let's, let's first pray about what we've, we've heard so far. And Lord, I just want to thank you for not sugarcoating this with me. And God, I first want to just repent of all the times that I, I know what I needed to do, and I didn't do it. Oh, God, forgive me of, of the times where I saw clear opportunities to obey, and I decided to cower back. And, Lord, I just pray that there's anybody here that has heard the good news of your gospel but has never done anything with it, that you wouldn't let them leave this place today. That, Lord, you would give them uh, a desire to repent, to believe, to have faith that, Jesus, you're the only one that can fix our relationships. You're the only one that can give us the right motivations. And that, Lord, they would come to me. They would come to somebody here today, somebody they came with, and, and, and talk this true and, fig and figure out, are they a, just a hearer of your word or are they a doer? And for those of us that have surrendered, have done that thing, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to cut away our excuses. Lord, we come up with some just crazy ways that we try to make ourselves feel better about why we're not obeying you. We say, oh, Lord, that's really extreme. That's not meant for me right now, right? You just want me to live and believe like that, but you don't actually want me to do that, do you? God, I'm just praying for conviction, repentance, and faith. And a motivation to not be a hearer anymore, but to be a doer. But to go out and to reflect who you are to the world around us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.